Sky Dweller as well, the rose gold, the blue dial. You don't like it as much? <laughs> it makes sense. I'm curious, are you into RM at all? All right, so Ken is a fairly new client to Wolven. He's actually bought a lot of watches from us in a short period of time. And so I'm still learning exactly what he likes. So let's see what catches his eye today. RM? RM, I like it, but you know, a little bit over my budget, but you know, okay. some basic one, maybe you can find something. I have something for you. It's not as expensive as some of the other ones you might have seen, but this one I think oh. would be perfect size and it is a pretty new one. Uh, it's an RM10 in titanium. You can also get some different straps with it, so you can get all kinds of different colors and really make it... What year of this one? 2023. Oh. New, new, new. new. Uh, this one isn't brand new condition. We had sold it to a client and then he's selling it back, so. But that's a good look. It's also not as big as some of the other ones that are out there that are really, really big. Um, and it's made of titanium, so even if it is a little bit bigger than you like, it's still at least light. I believe that one is like around 125. You may still like spend over 100 for a watch. I know. <laughs> sure, I gotcha. You know I mean? But this is supposed to be already the, the cheapest one, right? Well, it's one of the cheaper ones for sure. Uh, the only reason it's 125 is because it's a new old stock. So they were supposed to stop selling it, but then they had one that was sitting there for a long time, and I guess they sold it in 2023. This one is only one owner, so somebody used it for a little bit and then sold it right back. So the condition, for the most part, is actually pretty good, yeah. minus the little thing right there. Yeah. Do so you have another one to show me? More? Yes. Actually a little bit less expensive. Maybe for what you're looking for, it might, it might be more worth it because it's, it, it is really cool. So this is essentially the same watch in terms of like the, the size and everything that you have on the stainless one, but this mm. one's all rose gold. The cool thing about this one is that they only made it for a year, so it makes it pretty limited. And then you do get the open case back where the previous one, it had the contrasting subdials that this does, mm -hmm. but it didn't have the open case back. So they made this one for a year, because now I, I'm pretty sure you've, saw, you've seen that the dials have been all blue. Uh, but this one, they do have the gold and blue dial. To me, that's like one of the more ultimate rose gold APs that you can get. How much is this? Uh, so typically they run for about 115. That's how much you can find them online for. Uh, I believe this one we have for 103. That one's honestly one of my favorites that we have in here right now. You could usually see them online for about 115, but I'd rather sell it to you and you've been a good client, so. You may let me know if you have something on a price lower than 100. Lower than 100. Let me see what I can get a hold of. Similar, similar to the one that you showed me. Or maybe order on this one. Okay. See that that one I'll show you. They sell like probably 80 something. Like spend like over 100 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one you'd be safe in though for sure. The other ones that I find on RM, you're, you're paying you're paying what you pay for because those don't typically go down in price at all. These don't typically either, but we, we were able to get it for a good deal, so. You can sell lower than 100. Lower than 100? I mean, how much lower? I don't think I have that much room, but. Like, 98? 98. I think it would be hard for you to do 95, but 98 should be no problem. I'm trying. I think I can get close to it, but would you do 99? 98. 98? I'm not asking 95. Every time Ken comes in, he's always telling me that he's not gonna buy something. Uh, but every time thus far, he has brought his laptop and he's wired on the spot. And today, he has his laptop. So that was a subtle hint telling me that he was actually probably gonna buy something today. All right, let's do 98. We'll do 98. Well, every time. What's that? Every time I start laughing. I know. <laughs> well, that's, that's good for you though, too. This guy is one of the <laughs> Literally whenever that one came in, I was thinking of you. I think it's because you have the stainless one and whenever yeah. I saw all gold. I really love that one. Yeah, yeah. I, knew you, I know you do and that way you can daily more of that one and then this one you just take out for good occasions. This one, not a lot of good place you can look over. I know, but even then you at least you have it and it's, it's, a, really good, it's a really good one because 
That was my main complaint with the previous one is that they didn't have the open case back, but I'm glad that they made this because it's just the best of both worlds. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. All right, so as many of you may or may not know, this watch uh, particularly, they only made for one year. This reference to be clear is the reference number 26239OR. And what that means is that in that, in that one year that they made this watch, they wanted to make this to basically satisfy the desire for a watch in this configuration with the contrasting gold subdials and the blue dial itself, uh, because the newer ones they were actually going to release with an all blue dial, which if you ask people that really know, the 26331 was the one that had the contrasting subdials. So before they really launched that new reference number, the 26240OR, with the all blue dial, they wanted to release this for basically the best of both worlds. So the contrasting subdials that you see here and the open case back. For those that know, the 26331, the only complaint that pretty much everybody had was that it never had an open case back. And so now that this one does, they only made it in exclusive quantities, so only for a year. So it does make it pretty exclusive. And uh, honestly, one of my favorite configurations just for those very two things. I know they're kind of simple, but it's something that was long overdue because those modern 26331s just had that one issue. This solves it completely, and now you have a well-rounded watch that has those contrasts, which makes it more photogenic in my opinion, and you have that open case back. I think Ken picked very, very well. Honestly, one of my favorite Royal Oaks that you can no longer get <laughs> from AP but um, you can always get it here at Wolven. So this one's gone, but if you're looking for this exact watch, then uh, give us a call. Yeah, that one, you scored. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. absolutely. Here's your bag, you're all set. All right, so as you guys just saw that there was Ken. He's actually been a client of not too long ago, but I, I'll tell you what, ever since he's known about us and every time he's stepped into our store, he has bought something off of our shelf. And so uh, the first time actually that he came in, he had bought a uh, 26240ST, the green dial AP, the new style, uh, along with a 116518 uh, Pikachu. So that, that is the infamous Pikachu Daytona Oyster Flex. And uh, he bought both of those the first time he came in. And then ever since then, the next month, he had bought a 5167-1A. That comes with the bracelet, and of course it does come with the rubber strap. And then uh, today, uh, he came back. I already kind of had this watch in mind for him because I knew he would love it, um, but it's actually the 26239OR. Um, and this one specifically, they made a limited run of this reference number. Um, so if you, if you do some research, this is the only one that even has this reference number. It's the rose gold chronograph, the new style, technically speaking, but with the old style dial. And what that means is that if you look at a 26331, the dial looks identical. Um, but it has the new style body, uh, the case, the bracelet, and everything that the new one would come with but the old school, well, uh, recently old school dial. So what that does for me is that uh, AP had knowingly, they were gonna change the dial so that it was no longer that contrasting subdials with the gold subdials and do an all blue dial. Personally, wasn't a big fan. Um, I'm glad that they made this for only a year and made it sort of limited because it just is that much more special. But this, this watch in particular, he, I knew he was gonna be over the moon for it. And uh, he picked that one up today. And he's wanting to get uh, later on potentially an RM, uh, maybe an RM5, RM10 is what I showed him today. Um, and then he showed me a picture of an RM29. So there's a few options that we're kind of looking for. We're trying to get them under, like right under 100. I think that's doable. So we're just gonna look up some options. But in the meantime, I know he's enjoying that 262390R. And I know because as soon as he walked out the door, he just had a smile on his face. He kept looking at his watch. We'll see you next time.
Can you send somebody 7,000 on Venmo? I'll pay you. I'm gonna pay you back within like the next 30 minutes. So look, I'm at this watch store right now and just taking Venmo. My Venmo isn't working. Oh wait, actually you can send 6,000 because I have, I have some money on Cash App. So you can send 6,000 to this Venmo. Okay, I'll just give you 3K. And just, put, yeah. just text it to me so I don't forget. So that's Elijah. This is actually the second Arabic Green Dial Limited that he's bought from us. The reason he's buying a second one is for his friend. He got his on the bracelet with uh, the two original straps that it comes with. And he told us from day one that every time he wears that thing, everybody always asks him questions about it. So this friend has been wanting one. We just got one in today and Elijah walked in to get uh, his mother's watch sized. And lo and behold, he saw that one and he called up his friend. And so Elijah just bought it for his friend. Congrats to the new owner. What's happening, man? What are you up to? Oh, nothing much. Uh, so I, I, I didn't mean to miss you on whenever you were out on your vacation in Florida. I was supposed to send you that that box and everything. However, I, it does seem like you, you said you're back uh, in, in town, correct? Yes, but I'm leaving to go back. Okay. Not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Uh, okay. I bought a new boat, and my new boat is coming Ooh. in. So I'm. What boat did you buy? To, I bought a I bought a 52 foot Azimuth. Ooh, that's a fun time. So that's coming in. So I'm going down there to pick it up and uh, take possession and do all that gobbledygook. Oh man. So I'll be there for. Uh, from the 11th to the 18th. Okay. So if you send it um, Friday the 9th or Monday, um, then I'll, I'll be there. I'll make sure that you get your box um, whenever you're whenever you're back in Florida again. No worries right. on that. I'll make sure it's like overnighted or like two day shipping or whatever. That way we don't miss you again or anything right. like that. And then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and make sure that that's all set. All right, man. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Likewise. Alrighty. Bye bye. So uh, Jack came in actually at the towards the end of December, and he had expressed an idea because uh, his wife doesn't really ask for much, but there was there was one watch that she specifically wanted, and it was a yellow gold 31 millimeter date just with the presidential bracelet. It is just such a beautiful watch whenever you actually see it in person. Very elegant in its presence, I would say. A little bit different than what you would typically see, maybe of like a mother of pearl or like diamond bezel that sort of thing it just adds this level of classiness they've been married for about 50 years which is very impressive and so she asked for this one watch and we were able to get it also to really celebrate that 50th anniversary which is coming up in like the summer uh, Jack had also expressed updating her jewelry like her her main uh, marital ring and then a couple other pieces of jewelry as well for her uh, just to really celebrate that that 50th anniversary so we really want to uh, help out and see what kind of customization we can really come uh, come through with. We have a lot of connections with people that, that do this sort of thing, usually at, at a fraction of the cost that you would typically pay versus a lot of these other jewelers that are out there. Honestly, if there's anything that you guys are dreaming of and you're, you're wondering if we can make it, we certainly can. We would just love to sit down with you and see what kind of things we're, we're really looking for or what the goal is. And based on that, obviously present you with some sort of quote, um, time frame. A lot of that stuff is simple for us to make happen. So if you are looking for jewelry or you're wanting to potentially customize something, uh, please give us a call. What's up, bro? What are you working on? Hey, I am taking some pictures right here of this beautiful new watch that we just got. This is the Patek 5968R with the chocolate strap, chocolate dial. Absolutely beautiful watch. I love this piece. We had actually a client call in uh, asking for the stainless steel one. Uh, he was uh, he he loved the orange flex in the stainless steel one. He was a little concerned about the size though. And we told him we didn't have the stainless steel one. Instead, we've got this beautiful rose gold one. And he said, what gold, rose gold one? Uh, he didn't even know that they had actually made this one come out with it. So we told him, come on in, check it out, uh, size it out, see how it feels on your wrist. He's got a little bit bigger of a wrist, so it should feel great. And uh, we're hoping that he buys it. Uh, it should be great. And uh, I'm taking some photos just to be able to send it to him. Oh, by the way, I'm Derek, new salesman here at Wolven, luxury timepieces, 
and uh, I love these watches. I have a passion for watches, and I would love to talk with you guys if you ever any, have any questions just about some of these timepieces. So we're gonna put the number on the screen. Hit us up at Wolven. For those of you who've been following us for a long time, you guys know that Wolven's gone through some pretty big changes, um, even with staff and with uh, you know different people who've worked here and don't work here anymore, um, from salesmen to even old business partners. Now uh, we're in a new year, we're in a new season, and uh, we're working towards new things, whether it be now or whether it be one to two years from now, there's things that we have planned for this company that is gonna require a good team. The difficulty is, you know, I have it a little easier because I do work with three of my brothers. Uh, one of my guys who does the back office and stuff is also an extension of my family. He's uh, my dad's best friend's son. He's like a brother to me. And he's somebody that I know I can leave in charge with the safe and I would never have to worry about anything. And that's the kind of like the, the difficult thing in this business is when you're hiring outside of your family, sometimes it can get a little scary because you're trusting these individuals. Now, I'm not saying that everybody we hire is gonna necessarily have access to everything, but it's good to know that if I needed to, in any emergency or in any situation where I needed to leave somebody in charge, that we do have a staff that I feel comfortable with handing over the keys and knowing that my business is in uh, good hands with them. With that being said, we do have some plans, Andrew and I, Caleb and Christian, that we've been talking about plans that might be coming, uh, maybe not right now, but things that we're definitely working towards. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we do have to build this team. And so with that being said, you guys saw that we welcomed in Derek. Derek is a longtime friend. Uh, he recently uh, just wanted to go through a different career path, had some things in his life that changed and he wanted to pursue something else. And so uh, what I've known from Derek is that in every role he's ever had, he's always been required to be extremely detail oriented. He's always had to deal with different personalities, whether that be team building, whether that be dealing with different uh, staff members or with dealing with clients or things of that nature. He's always had to deal with large groups of people and making sure people are satisfied. And so with that being said, it, he was when he reached out to me and said, hey, is there any opportunity? It was actually a very easy decision to make. Derek, like I said, I've known him for a long time. I know I can extremely trust. I know that uh, worst comes to worst, I have to hand him the key for the store. I know my store is in good hands. That's extremely important in this business. We deal with very high end, valuable items and it, you can't just hire just anybody. You really do have to be careful who you hire. And so I'm glad that he reached out. I know that he's gonna be an incredible asset to the team. We have some plans for him in the future. For now, he's gonna come in doing sales, uh, learn the process. Um, he's, he loves watches, he's always liked them. He's not had an opportunity to really delve into it quite like this, but uh, I'm sure he's gonna, he's gonna jump in and uh, learn, because I know how he is. Uh, when he goes after something, he becomes a master at it. And, you guys should see him play the piano. <laughs> you guys should see him do a lot of things that he does. He's incredibly gifted, and so I know he's gonna bring a lot to the team. It's gonna be a pleasure for you guys to watch him as he grows within this company. I really think you guys are in for a treat. And uh, again, if any of you guys are interested, uh, you're in great hands with Derek. Uh, he has my blessing, and uh, I know he's gonna serve you guys really well. I think he would have been close to buying it. The only thing was that he was he was more intrigued about consignment because mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to see if he can gain more and then from there use that credit towards that yacht master. Yeah, in the forties. In the forties, right? Yeah, I'd have to charge like forty-four. Yeah, makes sense. Or he might get one through the AD, but even if he does, he would still be in the up and up. What are they retail for? Like 18? No, I think it's in the 20s. I can't remember what they're at now, if they have raised them. Oh, dude, I'm way off. Yeah, 14. 14K? 14K is retail. Retail on that? Are you serious? Yeah, and they go for 40, 44,000. You know, it's crazy. People were like, the Panda Daytona, if I can get one retail, I'll make a ton of money. But that watch retails for like 15, 16,000. Yeah. And then it resells for like 33. This one retails for less, 14, and then be. it sells for 44. 
So you make a lot more money on the titanium. So it's this 42 millimeter RLX titanium. Yacht Master, super sick watch. I wonder if they I've been on the titanium kick. I love titanium. I love titanium. I wonder, so that makes me think because honestly, I, what, what that tells me is that they're probably not even offering it that much. To They've actually anybody. held up at 40,000 too for I know, they were in the what, 60s and then they went down. Well, that was Whenever initially, first but, came out. but that didn't last very long. Yeah. But it's so, been in the 40s ever since. It was, it was released March 2023. Yeah, last year. That's when it was announced, but like they didn't start rolling them out till probably September ish. So I'm sure think, they were Why do you there. think that watch is going up so 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 high on the, the titanium? Uh, yeah, on the aftermarket. That's something. That I mean, a this lot is like one of the in. first all titanium watches. They've had titanium in the past, but it's been on strap. They've never done it on a bracelet. Titanium is the hardest metal that you can get on a watch. It's a lot more scratch resistant than your stainless steel, your golds, and they can take a beating. So actually, you know what'd be cool? A Submariner in titanium. That's, that was a lot of the rumors coming into that year is that people wanted to see, because it was going to be what, their 60th anniversary or 70th? No, 60th. 60th. 60th anniversary for the Submariner. Everyone was thinking that they were going to do this big old thing for the Submariner because it's one of the more popular ones. But instead, they gave the titanium, all like the all titanium watch to the Yacht Master, which it also looks amazing, by the way. But... There's something it something looks, about it something about it i just feel like uh, a submariner in titanium that would be like a true true diver's watch at that point like it's super light it's it's something that's ultra scratch resistant so it's more utilized as a tool watch i don't know it just it just seems a little bit more fitting i understand the yacht master and it actually looks really great uh, i love the black bezel that they do i wonder if they were to do the titanium uh in the submariner um if they keep the black bezel that would look that would actually be a, a sick look like not not just like black but like black on black where it's just also but that's why you see such an increase on the retail level for the swatch because a submariner cost uh like well at this point it's nine like thousand dollars ten thousand dollars retail this one's at 14 but that's because it's grade 5 titanium grade 5 is like the most expensive grade of titanium you can get and so the material itself is very expensive so they add four thousand dollars to the retail just because it's titanium let me know in the comments would you guys if you had the money would you pay forty four thousand for a yacht master in titanium or because you could also get with the same one you could get a gold piece you could get a day day you get daytona what would you do you could get this world time <laughs> you could get that <laughs> you could, world you time. could get this patek world time for so that there's a lot body. of watches you can get but would you Put that money towards a Yacht Master 42 in titanium. I know it's cool, but it's 40,000. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. All right, guys. One thing we've definitely been working on is getting our inventory back up after the holidays. We got wiped out. We had, I think, like close to 300 pieces at one point. Um, during the holidays, which is uh, what we normally have in stock. Uh, that's not counting watches that are in and out, watches that are being shipped to us or being shipped out or at the watchmaker. That's just what was in the store. And I think after the holidays, we got it down to like 90 something watches, which is pretty insane. With that being said, uh, we've been building our inventory and today we got a bunch of watches in. There was three particular that came in that I wanted to highlight because there's been some crazy news about them. They've been discontinued. And if uh, you recognize this box, you know that these are some paddocks. And uh, every once in a while, there's some watch models that come out and they're like key watches that you recognize from the brand. So like for the longest time since I really got into watches, these were watches that were grails for a long time that have been around for years and years and years. And it's kind of sad to see them go. Let's, uh, let's, let's kind of explore what we got going here. So first off, and just given by the, by the box itself, this is an older box. This watch did come from a more humid uh, environment. So it's crazy because the watch is in phenomenal shape. Um, it almost looks brand new. It's super crispy. There's like literally no scratches uh, on the high polish. Um, I almost don't even want to wipe because it's in that grade of condition. Um, but with that being said, look at this box. It is. It looks like it's been beaten. It really hasn't. It still has the blue cellophane covering the uh, stainless steel parts or the chrome parts. And uh, it's just that whenever you go into a humid climate, the, the material 
that they used to use to give it that soft touch, it just deteriorates like this, which is really sad. So we might try to get a new box for this. Um, it kind of, you know, the boxes are not cheap. They're about a thousand dollars, especially for like a brand new box from like a new paddock. They even sometimes fetch $1,500. So obviously that adds to the cost of the watch. So it just depends on the individual who's buying this watch. If you want us to get you another box or not, if it's a deal breaker, obviously we'll get the box. Um, but this one's a cool one. This is a 5712. This has just been discontinued. And it's sad because this is a watch that I remember whenever I got super into watches. I mean, this watch has been around since the 2000s. It's a watch that I recognize immediately as whenever I started really researching Paddock and getting into the Nautilus. The 5712 was just one of the ones. And what really drew me to this watch was the moon phase. The moon phase on this watch is something that just grabs your attention. And then from there, you kind of have to figure out the rest of the dial. And it's one of those love or hate situations because of the asymmetrical layout of the dial. There's guys who really love that part because it makes it feel interesting and complicated. And there's guys who really hate that. They don't like the asymmetry of it. They like a more symmetrical watch. They like the dial to be perfect. And that's kind of where the 5990 or the 5980 come into play. They're very symmetrical. Whereas this one, as you can tell by the dial, it's definitely not symmetrical. But I like that about it. I actually, honestly, when I first got into watches, I, I attributed Paddock as one of my favorites. And because of all the different things going on, it made it look extremely complicated. And I had this love for horology. Um, and so to me, it was just one of those things where it's like, wow, if you're reading everything on this dial, everything is very legible because it's, uh, it has a place on the dial on its own. It's not sharing with other parts of the dial. So like there's other watches where you're looking at the chronograph, but it's kind of obstructed by the GMT function, kind of like the 5980. That's okay for some people, for me. I mean, it's okay even for me, but I kind of like that part about this watch that if you're looking at the uh, AM PM indicator or the day or night indicator, you can look at that directly. If you're looking at the date, there's a part for that. If you're looking at the power reserve, you can look at that. You know, if you look at the moon phase, you can go straight to that. So anyways, that's something that's to love about the 5712. Sad to see this go, but this is discontinued. Will the prices go up? I don't know. So this one's from 2009, still with the Geneva movement. If you wanted something with the newer movement, then it's gonna be in here. And so we got the newer version. So this one's a 2015. And uh, we do have newer ones coming of these 5712s because they're gonna get hot real, real fast. This one, this one shows off another option you can get. That one had the brown rubber from Patek Philippe specifically. I know Rubber B makes a bunch of rubber straps if you wanted to get a white one, or uh, I think they even make reds and greens. Don't quote me on that, but Rubber B makes some great rubber straps for it. But you can also get the calf brown, there's a calf black, and then there's also crocodile brown and crocodile black. My favorite is the calf black. It's still leather, you can dress it up, but with that finish that it has on it, it kind of has this satin matte finish. It makes it look a little rubbery, so it still looks pretty sporty. Uh, so it's kind of the blend of best of both worlds. But nonetheless, here we have a 2015. The condition's a little less desirable than this one, but still in great shape. We can get this one touched up. We do have a watchmaker who specializes in AP and paddock. So we might send this one off, but it came in today and we're excited to have it in inventory. And then the last one that is really a shocker because of how popular it is, is the 5164A. It's gone. This has been discontinued. And uh, it's pretty shocking because again, this is a watch that's been around for a long time. Um, it's kind of like uh, the G-Wagon. It's almost like if they discontinued the G-Wagon, this is gone. But I wonder if they're gonna come out with something in place of it. Maybe we're gonna get the new 5164. Obviously it's gonna be a different reference or something of that nature, but maybe we get the new travel time. I hope so, because this is such a awesome watch. It's perfect size for a lot of guys, 40 millimeter, with the added function of the uh, GMT function with the travel time and these pushers on the side, it really just widens the case a little bit, makes it look a little bit more uh, substantial. So also the height of this watch allows it to stand out. So if you're a guy that has tried on the 5167 and it's too thin for you, and too small, give this one a try. It's not a lot bigger, but it definitely has more presence. It's thicker. Again, the pushers on the side really widen out the, the case. I definitely think that it has a, definitely a larger appearance on wrist for most guys. It's definitely gonna outshine the 5167 in that regard. Uh, but guys, crazy, crazy, crazy that these are gone. Crazy to see two legends die, which kind of sucks because these are legendary. These are legend, uh, legendary watches. Now, obviously they're still making this on the bracelet, but still, 
The one on the strap was the one that everybody knew for the longest time. The bracelet just came around, I think a year ago or so, a year or two ago. If you ever thought of a 5712, it was either this or the stainless steel variants. It's crazy to see that this uh, rose gold on strap is gone because it honestly is an handsome example. I really love that you can have a rose gold watch on a rubber or on that leather strap I talked about and be able to dress it up, dress it down. Again, I like the asymmetry of it. It really screams that it's a complicated watch and I like that about it. Man, what do you guys think? Are you guys gonna miss these? Are we excited to see? What do you guys think Paddock is gonna do? Do you think they're gonna bring out something to replace the travel time? I'd love to hear you guys' comments down below, but again, these are two awesome watches. They're not available from Paddock anymore, but they're available on our website. So visit us at www.wolven.com. Thank you